I think I talked about that earlier about how how do you begin? There was that person who asked, "What? How do you begin the creative process?" And I think I talked about the fact that it's a, I, it's about understanding the nature of the client, what they want me to do. Um, but I also want, I like to work with people I like. <laughs> you know, it's not just because they pay me money. I, I just want to have a good time with them. So I ask them a lot of questions at that first meeting. And for me, the creative process is really about being creative, about gleaning what a person is about. So not only what their needs are, which they could be representing a company, a magazine, whatever, but I also want to know who they are. So that that, to me, is the beginning of the process. Because the more receptive they are to you, then the more you can do a lot for them. So that is really the trick. The secret is arriving at a sort of level of equal respect and then you can design anything you can even sell them anything and they buy it you know when people say yeah what's the process how do you go about it where do you get inspiration blah 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 and I said I, you know I, I, I can do that but I need to know whether they're receptive people because you know I could come up with ideas and if they're like a block for me it's nothing I can do and so I, I read people quite well because I think you're, if, I'm, if you're a generous person and if you, if you ask a lot of questions, they reveal a lot. And you have to be receptive to what kind of people they are. And if they're not good people, you know, there's a lot of those. You can tell right away. I'm thinking, I don't really want to work for you because I'm not going to have a good time. Life's too short to work on projects that are just dead. So I want to have a pro positive experience, but I also want to make sure that it is an experience that I can learn from, whatever it is. Also, you know, when I was a, a student, it was very narrowly called graphic design. And then now that I have been teaching for the last 35 years or so, the, the scope has broadened because the digital technologies have, have, have allowed us to expand what communication is. So it could be analog, it could be digital, there's print at the, on one end, but then there's, there's the digital and all the platforms that relate to that, and the parameters are very different. You know, so when you're designing a book or a, a logo or a brochure or whatever, it's, you're really looking at something that's handheld. You know, you're flipping pages, so the, the, the gesture di dictates that you look at it from, a, from that standpoint. But then if I'm online, I always tell my students, there's the laptop, I know, but then there's the smartphone, and most of the, the design of the smartphone is vertical. You know, so you're communicating in terms of like, you know, finger, you know, sensitive, touch sensitive. So how how can you how can you assure that the message you're choose you're doing is actually gonna stay? Because otherwise, people are just going like this. You know, in 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 a book, I can turn pages, I can slow down a little bit, but digitally, you can't. It's done in seconds, and so. You know, I have to tell, you know, and that's what I always tell my students, you're communicating, but the communication design has expanded based on our attention span, based on our, the, the, the devices that we have. And so we know how, how we react to those devices and we have to respond to human nature and how we use those devices. So do people always carry laptops? I don't think so, but they're always carrying their phones. So the phone is communicating the, the, the message on this narrow real estate that you can scroll or it can move like a GIF or it can go like this. So what does, what, how do we train students like that, right? How we, what, is, what, what do I tell them? That's communication design too. So it's understanding human nature. See, we're back to human nature. We're back to our practices, our behavioral issues that we, you know, you're not from another planet. I know how you think. You're another human being. You're not from Mars. So you could be from China, you could be from South America or whatever, but human beings act in a certain way. And that's when you can design, you can do communication design that's not just limited to the country, the culture that you are in. So it just goes beyond that. So I said that earlier about people you know, being very perceptive about people. How do you generate credibility? I was just talking to Weber about that earlier. And, you know, first, how do you 
they they see your work so that you're you're in the door essentially your foot is in the door because they say we see you we we saw your work online or we saw it in this magazine it's great but to me design the design process is not a beauty contest it's fine like you don't know me but if i as soon as i as soon as you call me and you say, hey, Lucille, we'd like to work with you on this project, I said, oh yeah, okay, how did you find out about me? And they said, well, I saw your work in the blah, 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 and I said, oh, that's good, I'd like to meet you. So then I call them, and then we get together, and so the whole process is so, you know, that credibility is about assume, creating a kind of level of equal, like you're, you're my equal, you're younger than me, but if you're, you called me, you needed my work and my, my expertise. I'm assuming you did your homework, right? And so I, I think you're smart. So if I assume that, then we're on the same footing. And as soon as that is established, then you'll, you'll think, how, you know, Lucille's asking a lot of really interesting questions. She's smart. I think uh, we, don't, we haven't even talked about design yet, yeah. right? I haven't even shown you anything. I'm just talking to you and I'm asking you questions. So why do you think you need to get this done? Do you think you really need a logo? And do you think you need an, a website? Well, what if it was just social media? Maybe. I don't know. Who's your audience? How old are they? And how, how much, you know, what's their, and give me a little bit of a background since I don't know your company. Tell me a little bit. Okay. I'm asking you these questions. Now, will you, what will you think? I said, Lucille's kind of really perceptive. You know, she's not just saying, I'll give you a logo in like two weeks, okay? And that's like, you know, five thousand dollars or something, and you're thinking, wait a minute, I don't even know what you, you didn't even ask me questions. You're giving me prices already. I don't know. So as, this whole session of asking questions, getting to know you, getting to know your needs. I'll just say, um, let me think this through, and I'll give you a proposal. I go back, and the person reads my proposal. Phase one involves this, this, this. You know, phase two after approval of this, and then this person is like, whoever the client says, oh yeah, she's. It's very thorough. So, okay. And, and then they look at the bottom line and said, oh, $10,000. Oh, yeah, she's worth it. Because she's asked all the right questions. And then now she's uh, articulated every process. I haven't even shown you design yet. Because <laughs> you saw it at the beginning. That's how you hired me. That's how you asked me to even interview me. So you saw my work. But you don't know what I'm going to do for you. You don't know yet. So as soon as that is established, then the person will say, okay, let's go into the first design phase now. Okay, you've, you've already ma ma established credibility 50%. And you can sell them anything. So every time I go to a client, they, they're like, at the point when I'm pro showing the design, they, they get so excited. They say, you get so excited about the process. You know, I'm so glad I'm working with you. You really have a, a good sense. And, you must really enjoy what you're doing. And then, you know, the, the unanswered, unasked question is, do you enjoy what you're doing? I don't want to ask that because I don't want to put myself in a position where I'm really happy. I really, I like what I'm doing. And what about you? Anyway. So they, so they, they tell me, I like coming to your office. I see a lot of things, etc.